It's, it's awesome. Just such an incredible place, isn't it? I mean, I wish I would have been a student here. I mean, it's amazing, isn't it? It's beautiful in Oxford. It's so atmospheric. It's just that golden hue that makes it all feel very rich and timeless. Professor Bagley, Detective Inspector Thursday. Detective Constable Morse, Oxford City Police. We're only here for like three or four days per film. Such a great place, because I feel it comes alive as well when you're here. And the way people behave here as well, I think the story starts to make sense in a different way. I'm going away at the weekend. Uh, might not be back for some time. I wonder, could I leave one or two things with you for safekeeping? Of course. It's one of those Cities that you feel like there's secrets hiding everywhere. Little secret areas, you know, where little exchanges can happen. The atmosphere is very important. It's the unseen character, a very pressured environment where no one really says what they're thinking. Everybody's carrying a secret, and everything you do tries to sort of enhance that and that's about the lights and the colours and the shots you use. It's to sort of leave you feeling everything is not as it should be. Out of kilter. There's lots of lines and perspectives that are arguably psychological. Lots of shadow. And it keeps sticking a torch in the lens. It seems like an old-fashioned trick, but it's really effective. It's, it just makes everywhere look so odd and opaque. But also we get to see like the roof of one of the colleges or the underground pastures or somewhere that you wouldn't really necessarily get to see. But after rain must come a rainbow. Within the quad, which you've got the green, beautiful carpet of grass, and then the stonework, we had these bright colours. Like a Lulu character, who's singing with all her backing dances, her go-go dances. And Charlotte done all these costumes and umbrellas, and we did all the dancers, and had to be, they all had the same hair, so they all had hair pieces on. But we wanted the hair moving, so it was very much that kind of 60s. Pop culture kind of madness. Don't worry, you haven't gone mad. Filming a television show. So many people had said, it's funny that you don't see any elements of the swing in the 60s in it, so I think it was long overdue that. I really like that story. It's about a rock group, and drugs are featured really heavily. You need to stay cool. He's OK, he's just on a trip and he's going to come back now. And that's what uh, the 60s is synonymous with, so it was good to have those two worlds collide. And the radioactive material, is it safe? Perfectly. Well, there you go. Each film feels so individual. Each film, you're building a different world. When you asked me to get rid of them, it was the first time I'd seen them. Lifting the veil on a different side of Oxford, it's like... Thursday and Endeavour are your way into different parts of Oxford, different parts of 1967, and you are enjoying, relishing, learning, and also being thrilled by the crime story and, and laughing or crying over the different character stories, and there's just so much there to enjoy. I can't. Of course you can. I can't. It is a beautiful place to film, but uh, that said, it's, it's very, very difficult. It's the summer, you know, so it's absolutely packed. And the amount of organisation of the whole crew coming to Oxford. Getting around the city is, is the main problem, getting between the locations. Some of them are quite compact and you can sort of walk between them, otherwise it's a drive. It means uh, negotiating Oxford's notorious one-way system, which if you do that at the wrong time of day can leave you high and dry. Everything you see in the back of shot has to be believably in the 60s. Where you're kind of always trying to look down the street and look for long perspectives and wide shots, it's really challenging, obviously, because everything that goes in front of the camera is, it has to be generated by us. They always do a really good job uh, with exteriors and taking Oxford way back into the 60s. It's them. Um, 
it's quite extraordinary actually what they managed to achieve. It's quite beautiful really, I love all the cars and everything. I've been extremely lucky because I've had a great design department. I had visited Oxford before I did this series, but I don't think I'd really realised its beauty. And now we've all filmed it, we all really love it. If you get up high in Oxford, it looks incredible. It kind of looks like Rome. Ross Mender, pleased to meet you. The history here is sort of seeping out of everywhere. And then we also get to interact with uh, fans of the show who come down to watch filming. People are so welcoming and so appreciative of us being here and come over and say, oh, God, you know, I love the show and whatnot. So it's, we're very lucky. He's such a good guy. He sets the tone, always enthusiastic. We've got an extraordinary team. All of them work so hard and are a good laugh. We are part of uh, a family. And we have a lot of people, not only cast, but crew returning year on year and you form really close relationships with people and it makes it just a wonderful environment. We gel together so well and that's just got better and better. You know, I think to be creative, it demands an atmosphere of like friendliness. <laughs> the days are long and everyone's away from their family so much that it's got to be a joy when you're at work. And you spend so long out of work, you might as well enjoy it while you're here.